Welcome to Growth Moments. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of how to develop a time of prayer. These are intended to be short videos that help you have simple answers for how to grow in your spiritual life. So we hope that you'll take a couple moments with us and look at how to develop a time of prayer. Now let me just start this devotional in this moment by saying a couple of disclaimers. Let me start by saying that I am in no way a prayer expert. I understand that today's society, um, we put a lot of weight on being an expert. So I'm not coming to you as someone who has prayer figured out. In fact, I would say that these are all things that have been birthed out of my personal life of prayer and things that I am trying to learn and that have been a help to me. And so we're going to give a couple of simple principles. But not only am I not an expert, but these principles are not going to be deep and they are in no way exhaustive, but they are personal. Once again, these are things that I have seen help me as I try to learn to pray. And I think that that's something that we can all agree and be on the same page of, is that we want to grow in our life of prayer. But not only am I not an expert, and these are not exhaustive, but these are in reference to developing your daily time of prayer. I understand that 1 Thessalonians teaches us that we can pray without ceasing, and I firmly believe that you should do that as a Christian. But today we're going to specifically hone in on how do you develop that time of prayer. The goal of this is that you would be able to take these principles and develop a prayer routine for you either in the mornings, maybe in the afternoons, depending on your schedule, or maybe even at night. Something that you can take and that you can help develop your personal time of prayer and then the last disclaimer is this, is that prayer changes you. Sometimes we come with selfish motives to our prayer life and we assume that we need to learn how to pray just so that we can get the things that we want. The Bible teaches us that prayer is not to be done to consume it upon our own lust, but is intended to be something that allows us to see God glorified. And so we'll talk about that a little bit today. But you've got to understand that prayer doesn't always change your situation, but it does always change you. And so with that in mind, I want us to look at Luke chapter number 11 today today. Luke 11 is really the content and contains the Lord's Prayer. Okay, The Lord's Prayer is probably the most popular prayer in human history. It's been quoted by millions, probably billions of people as we've referred to prayer. But a lot of times what we fail to understand about the Lord's Prayer is that it is actually given in the context by Jesus in answer to his disciples saying, Lord, teach us to pray. So Luke chapter number 11 verse 1 says this. It says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And then verse number two, the verses and the words that you might recognize, this is Jesus' response. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So this is Luke's account of the Lord's Prayer. And once again, this is Jesus responding to his disciples in their question of, Lord, teach us to pray. Now let me explain to you something about why that is so encouraging. These are people that had followed the Son of God himself, and yet they were still managing to ask him after they had seen and heard him pray, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Here's what I love about Jesus' answer. He does not respond to them and say, well, you've either got it or you, or you don't. It's natural. You better figure it out on your own. No, he responds with a model prayer that is still referenced in today's world. He basically lets them know that prayer is something that you can learn. And here's something that has stuck with me as I've read this passage over and over again in my life, and that is this, that if prayer can be taught, then prayer can be learned. If prayer can be taught, then prayer can be learned. As a Christian, you have an opportunity to learn to pray. You have an opportunity to learn how to communicate with your Heavenly Father. And let me just say, just as I gave in my disclaimer, I am in no way an expert, and I don't know that we ever become an expert on prayer. But I do think that we can grow in how we communicate with our Heavenly Father. Not only do I think that we can grow, I think that we should be growing. And if 2020 has taught us nothing else, I pray that it has taught us to seek God in a better way. So let's look at four quick principles of how to develop a personal time of prayer. First of all is this. 
Develop a biblical perspective of prayer. Develop a biblical perspective of prayer. Here's why I say that. So many times we fail to understand what the Bible teaches about prayer, so we fail to understand how to pray. And part of understanding how to pray is understanding what the Bible teaches us about prayer. There are so many verses in Scripture that teach us about prayer, and let me just say that very few of them have anything to do with just getting what you want. Very few of them have anything to do with creating a wish list for God to answer. Hebrews chapter number 4, verses 14 through 16 are some of the greatest verses on prayer that you can ever read in Scripture. They say this, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And then verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here's one of the greatest things for you to understand about prayer is that prayer in Scripture is often taught in the context of pain. Prayer is normally not taught in, well, this is what I want to happen, or this is what I want God to fix, or this is the situation that I want to get out of. It is often taught in the context of pain, meaning that prayer does not always change the circumstances around you, but it can change you. The goal of prayer is that God would be glorified, and sometimes he is glorified in miraculous answers to prayer, but sometimes he's glorified in how you respond to prayer. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of asking God to maybe change a situation, you could come with a different attitude to a situation. Maybe you've got something going on in your family. Maybe you've got something going on to, at work and you're asking God to change that. Keep pursuing that. Keep praying for that. But also be willing to look inward and ask God to change you. Prayer changes you. So let's develop a biblical perspective of prayer. When you pray, there is a scene that is occurring according to scripture that is absolutely amazing. When you pray according to Hebrews chapter number 4 verse 16, you are coming before the throne of God. You're going to approach that differently than you would a casual coffee conversation. When you pray, you are entering in to the throne room and presence of a God who knows everything there is about you, who is the creator of the universe, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's the God that you're communicating with. So let's set a biblical perspective of prayer, but let's not only set a biblical perspective of prayer, let's also set aside a time and a place to pray. When you read through scripture, I would encourage you to do something, especially in moments of prayer. Look at how often a time and a location is linked to a great answer to prayer. You read some of the prayers that Elijah and Elisha saw. Most of the time there will be a time and a place linked to that answer to prayer. And oftentimes in our life we try to get alone with God while we're on the run. And can I just encourage you with this? that most of the important things that have occurred in your life, you can recall a time and you can recall a place. And that should be no different than, than your prayer life. When you see God do something and when you spend time with the creator of the universe, there should be a time and there should be a place. I will tell you that one of the greatest helps that I've ever had in my prayer life is this. When I moved my prayer time and my prayer life from a reminder to an appointment, most of you probably, if you have a smartphone, you have two apps on your phone. You've got reminders or a to-do list, and you also have a calendar or a schedule. Most of the time, you put a reminder in that says something about, hey, don't forget to get milk on the way home, or don't forget to do this, or remind me when I get here that this is what I need to do. For years, I used to put a reminder in my phone that just said pray. And what I found was that I could ignore that. But when I started to make my prayer life an appointment, I looked at that differently. You plan differently for a reminder than you do an appointment, don't you? If you know that you've got an appointment at a certain time of day, and especially if it's maybe early in the morning or with it, if it's with someone important, you're going to prepare for it. You're going to lay your clothes out. You're going to wake up ahead of time. You're going to look forward to that, especially if it's someone that you want to be with. And prayer is the same way. Prayer is not something that is intended to just be on the run, although it can be. Prayer is not intended to be something that is just as you go throughout your day, although it can be. 
The sweet moments of prayer are often attached to a time and a location. So set a time and a location, but then thirdly, pray with a plan. Pray with a plan. Have you ever gotten, and maybe you've set aside a time to pray, and you've gotten to the throne room of God, and now you're getting ready to share your heart with God, and you just don't know what to say? Sometimes it's nice to have a little template. It's nice to know what you need to talk to God about. Sometimes it's even nice to just go and share your heart with God. And when you come before the throne of God, when you come before the presence of God, have a plan. Know what you're going to say. Share your heart with Him. Share your burdens. One of the things that I've gotten to do personally, and one of the things that I know many others on our staff and here in our church use, is they use a little acrostic that just spells out pray, P-R-A-Y. First of all, let's start with praise. You can even see this in the model prayer given in Luke chapter number 11. Start out with praise, but then secondly, go to repentance. What are things that you've allowed in your life that could be become, coming between you and your Savior? Repentance. But then thirdly is ask. Sometimes we like to run in and we like to almost treat God as if he's a parent that we're just asking something from. We never want to praise him. We never really want to take care of the things that have come between us. When we just run and we ask him for things, let's begin with praise, let's begin with repentance, but then let's ask. Not just ask things for yourself, pray for others, intercede on behalf of others. And then lastly is yield. So praise, repent, ask, and yield. Give yourself, give your time, give your life to God that day and ask him to help you. And then the last thing is this. Not only should we develop a biblical perspective of prayer, not only should we set aside a time and a place, and not only should we pray with a plan, but let's consider praying out loud. One of the things that has struck me as I have tried to increase my prayer life with God is that very few, if any, of the prayers that we see in Scripture are prayed quietly. I understand that not every opportunity is going to lend itself to praying out loud. I understand that we sing songs like Whisper a Prayer in the Morning, but have you noticed how distracted our society is? And if you're anything like me, sometimes you bow your head, you close your eyes, and you get ready to enter into that throne room of God. And before you know it, you're thinking about the to-do list that you have that day. You're thinking about other things that are on your mind. You're thinking about maybe something you just prayed about, and now you're come, trying to come up with your own solutions. But when you're communicating out loud to God, that's a conversation. And ultimately, that is all that prayer is, is a conversation with God. And so let me encourage you with this, that as you begin to develop your Christian life, prayer is going to be essential to that. And so let's have a time and a place to pray. Don't stop with just a time and a place. Pray without ceasing. But let's have a moment to where we are intentionally focusing on our relationship and our communication with God. The only way we do, we do that is by developing a biblical perspective of prayer, by setting aside a time and a place, by asking God and praying with a plan. But then lastly is maybe consider praying out loud. Avoid the distractions that could be entering your mind and ask God to help you. Thanks for watching Growth Moments. If there's anything that we can ever do for you, feel free to reach out to us. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, or maybe you'd like to see us touch on a subject here on Growth Moments, feel free to email me at joel.norse at franklinroad.org. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to be able to pray with you about something and help you in any way that we can. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time.